Hey, if you're watching this video because you really, really want to improve your serve, you're in the right spot at the right time because today I'm going to spoon feed the perfect serve practice to you. So if you've been hitting the practice court with your buckets of balls and it's still not showing up in the matches for you, the results are not showing up in the matches for you, you're going to love this video. Let's get started. All right, so let's get into this video. Why is it so important to develop a perfect serve practice? Now, we take a look at the best players in the world. They have technically perfect serves. And how they get that? Well, they've most likely built a template that's perfect to their serve. They have perfect, they've developed a way to practice perfect technique. They hit the right amount of serves. And so when they go out and they play a match, they're hitting these amazing serves. They're winning anywhere from 60 to sometimes more than 90% of the points. Federer won 96% of his first serve points versus Berrettini, which is pretty amazing at Wimbledon. So they've developed perfect serves. Now what's happening to players like yourself and what I've seen over and over again is you have a bad serving day on the court and you really, really want to serve well, so you take your bucket out to the court the next day. Now that's more than 90% of people are going to do, so I'm applauding you for that. But what ends up happening is you're just doing a bunch of serves. You're serving, you have, your serve has some flaws, some leaks. Leaks are what I call inefficiencies that's keeping you from building the perfect kinetic chain. You're coming here and you're leaking all over the place and you're hitting and reinforcing thousands and thousands of serves doing it wrong so when you go play the next match well maybe the next match is better but the match after that you know what i mean the serve goes back to being a disaster and it frustrates you and then you hit the practice court again and you go and you serve buckets of balls stop doing that don't serve buckets of balls the wrong way what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to do it the right way so let's start with our warm-up okay so number one on our list on our perfect serve practice is we got to warm up properly it's very very important and uh, a lot of pros will actually use exercise bands now i'm not going to make you go out and buy a band i'm going to assume most of you don't have one of those you don't need one to warm up but what we're going to do is we've got to make sure, first of all, those shoulders are nice and loose, that we're, we're loosening up the synovial fluid in our shoulders, and you're doing big ones and small ones, and you want to go to what actually starts to burn. If it burns, you're not injured. This means that everything's getting revved up and ready to go. So you're doing that. The next thing you're going to do is, at least with your dominant arm, I'd like you to do both arms, but at least with the dominant arm, take it and have it go down here. This is going to help you get that flexibility, get that stretch so you get into a nice racket drop and you can really, really feel that loosening up all down here. And then you're going to bring it across and pull and now you're feeling it come there. And you do this, you want to hold for at least 10 to 20 seconds and I do that two or three times. Now your arms are getting warmed up and loose and ready to go. Another thing you want to do is also try to loosen up the wrist a little bit, going back and forth with this exercise and doing that so you feel nice and loose. The next thing we're going to do before we hit any serves is we're going to go into what I call the Cam Newton perfect throwing position. So I, I sent um, one of my students who's doing a great job, she's learning how to throw a ball. Her name's Kathleen and I sent her this image of Cam Newton in the throwing position. Why? Because her elbow, like many of my students, was way too high so she's not getting any power and she's going like this. She's serving like that and she's throwing like that. You can see that's got no momentum behind it. And then I sent her a picture of Cam Newton who's like this, okay? And if you notice, all professional athletes, all quarterbacks are getting in this position. All baseball pitchers, they hold the, the ball in their glove and they're in the same position because this is where you can really fire the arm and get a lot of acceleration, a lot of snap, a lot of pop and they're snapping right from this position. So this is important just to get here, get in this position and then also get yourself into a little bit of a tilt like you're going to throw a long bomb. If you're looking at me right now you can see oh he's getting ready to throw for some power without even watching me go into the throwing motion. So this is what I want you to get yourself into is that Cam Newton throwing position. Look at the legs, look how he gets set set look how I get into the tilt now what you're gonna do from there is you're gonna practice throwing balls over the net I want a minimum of 30 
and we're going to start to work on our acceleration. But we're going to do it slowly, a slow warm up because you don't want to throw your arm out. So you don't want to go there and be trying to throw it over the fence right away. But you do want to feel that pop and that snap right away, but do it easy. Watch how we do it. So here we go. I'm in that Cam Newton throwing position. I'm here. I get myself into a little bit of a tilt. Notice how the leg is bent back here. And I'm going to release right out of there. Now I'm going nice and easy. I'm not throwing the too hard. I'm coming here. I'm getting set. A nice easy release. And you want to do this over and over again until all of a sudden you can start to feel like you're getting a little more warmed up, adventurous, and you can maybe try and hit the fence. If you can hit the fence, then you know you're pretty warmed up, but don't rush to get there. I'm going to do a couple more, get in Cam Newton throwing position, throw a little more. So I'm accelerating and I was able to hit the fence. I'm going to do it again. Get set, throw, and we're hitting the fence. So this is letting me know that my arm is starting to get warmed up because it's not actually that hard for me to throw and hit the fence. I can throw it over the fence if I want to, but I don't want to because I don't want to lose my, my tennis balls. So that lets me know I'm warmed up. Now, here's the beautiful thing about what we just did. By getting in that Cam Newton position, I am building in what I call the secret power source. This again, you're going to see many professional tennis players get right here, like Andy Roddick, like Roger Federer, many, many servers. Most servers get into this position before they go up and they pop that serve. So what I want you to do is you're going to get into this secret power source and you're going to do a tossing drill that I call stop and pop. Let me show you how that's done. Now this stop and pop tossing drill, it might be the most important exercise in our perfect serve practice because many players struggle to get a consistent toss to where they're tossing too far back, they're tossing way over their head and knocking their balance off, they're tossing out there, they're tossing too far in the court, they're tossing too low, they're tossing too high. It's kind of like the Goldilocks story, right? You're trying to find the perfect serve toss. So what is that perfect serve toss? To me, it's a ball that's, if you get on your tippy toes, it's just over that. It's just over the racket tip. So for me, it's like right there. I want to toss it about that high over the racket tip. And once I find that, the ball to me stops in midair. It kind of freezes for a microsecond. I don't know what the timing is, but to me, I see the the, the, the time, I see the ball stop. So I'm going to be here, I'm going to call it stop. Once it reaches the top, stop. So this is developing my toss, right? The height, it's developing rhythm, and every time I call out stop. What it's also doing is it's telling this arm to freeze. When I'm saying stop, my hitting arm is frozen. It can't move. And that's extremely important because most tennis players, once they toss that ball, they also bring the racket behind their head too early. They go into the racket drop too early and now you're losing a lot of power and a lot of control. It's something that Rick Macy talks about a lot in his videos and I think it's a great, I think it's a great tip is what happens is you don't stop, that ball goes up, it's going up, you're here and then you go to hit and you got this weak push kind of serve. So by holding this and just saying, stop. You're building that you're building that timing. You're building that hold. Okay? So when you finally release it like a quarterback throwing a long bomb down the field, it's explosive. So the next thing you're going to replace that stop with is go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say go, and once I add go, I'm also going to go into another part of my warm up, and that's balance. What many tennis players do is once they start serving, their body's all over the place. They're not paying attention to their lower body. There's no discipline. So they'd be hitting and their legs coming around or they're, they're stumbling a little bit or they're jumping right away when they're not ready to jump. All kinds of things are going on that are setting you up for a bad serving day. So the only thing allowed to move as I call out go is the toe. So it's go and the toe is the only thing allowed to move. Go and toe. So here we go. So I'm here. I already called out my stop. So now it's go. Boom. And the toe can move. Doesn't matter if the ball's in or out. Go. And we're practicing. Right? And 
go. So the toe is the only thing allowed to move and we're hitting that serve. Once you get that down, you're gonna still stay in the secret power source and now you can start to relax around with a baseball pitcher finish. So if you notice when pitchers pitch a baseball, they come here, they step forward, and then this other leg comes around. So now you can do that after you serve. So again, you can be calling out go, and then you can bring that leg around after you hit. You don't want to be doing it as you're hitting. The timing's not that. That's not it. You're holding this back, you're turning the toe, and then you're relaxing around for your balance and your recovery. And it's going to enable you to, to hit the ball just a little harder without trying too much harder. So I'm here, let's see it, go, and around. See that? I'll do that again. Go, and around. So I'm hitting pretty big serves without even trying. That's reaching the fence, and I'm on the ground, and I'm not swinging my hardest. It actually feels really great. Once I get that established, I can do what I call the lazy jump. The lazy jump, again, why do I call it the lazy jump? Because I'm not trying to hit the ball hard. I'm still warming up. I'm not worried if the serve really goes in or out. So now I'm doing the lazy jump. And so by the lazy jump, I'm coming here. I still want you to start in secret power source. And you can also foot fault a little bit. I like to, I like to kind of step into the ball, step forward, and lazy jump. So now I'm getting... Now, another thing too, guys, if you're not good at jumping, if you don't jump on your serve, you can just do the, the um, you can just keep working on the, the baseball pitch. You don't have to jump on your serve, okay? So for some of you, this is kind of bonus time. This is a bonus drill. For some of you, are, you're not ready to do this. So here we go. So I'm in set and lazy jump into the serve. And it feels nice and relaxed. Okay, here and lazy jump into the serve. How do you know when you're ready to jump? And I really like to compare this to basketball, okay? If, if you are somebody who doesn't play a lot of basketball and someone passes you the ball, it's probably safer for you to stay on the ground and try and shoot a layup than it is for you to jump. Because once you start to jump, you lose all your coordination. Well, if you pass it to uh, a guy like Steph Curry, it's probably safer and he's probably going to make more if he doesn't stay on the ground and shoot the layup, but if he actually gets airborne, he's more balanced up there and feels more control and he's going to make more shots. So it's the same thing for servers. If, if you feel that when you jump, you're losing a lot of body control and you don't feel balanced like you do on the ground. See, when I go into my jump, I feel just as balanced in the air as I feel on the ground. That's not really challenging my body too much, especially when I'm going to the lazy jump. So that's how you know you can do that. So the next thing on our list is the powerhouse serving. So now we want to, our, our body's warmed up and we want to challenge it a little bit. We're probably going to miss a little more than normal, but we're going to see if our body is ready to hit the ball its hardest. Now, when we go into the powerhouse serve round, I suggest you ramp it up. You don't go right into your hardest serve, but you're going a little more aggressively than you would on a, um, on a lazy jump serve. And you have a choice. You can either stay in secret power source and go more into your powerhouse serving, which actually feels quite nice. See that? And again, it doesn't matter if you're missing in powerhouse serving, you're kind of challenging your body. Secret power source go okay or you can go into your full natural serve motion so if you want to go into your full natural serve motion and go into your ritual this is a good time to do it in the powerhouse serve round so I'm coming here and then I'm gonna come here <laughs> And my balance is way off on that one, but it's going to tend to be sometimes when you're going in the powerhouse serve round because you're challenging your body more. Okay, that, that one felt a lot better. I'm going to do one more in my powerhouse serve round. A 
Okay, so now the body is warmed up and now we're ready for some target practice. So let's do that. Okay, so now that we've got all warmed up, we're, we're, our body should be fully engaged, ready to go. I have a light sweat going on right now. That lets me know my body's ready to roll. And now we set up target practice. So what I want you to do is I find that people try and do too many things in practice. I just want you to set up one target for the day. So I'm going with a down the middle serve and with that down the middle serve I want to develop a serve that I can consistently make at least more than 5 out of 10. That, like that should be my bare minimum. If I do less than 5 out of 10 I know there's a major problem. If it's 5 out of 10, especially if you're hitting the ball not you're hitting the ball pretty hard, that's not so bad. That's one out of two. As long as you don't miss two in a row you're not double faulting. But I would like most of us to be able to make six, seven, or eight out of ten. If you make six, seven, or eight out of ten, you're serving pretty good. And you also want to say, well, what's my goal that's going to make it safe? What spin am I going to put on the ball that makes the most sense? So for me, if I'm going to go down the middle, you know, I could go flat down the middle. That's an option. Could I go kick down the middle as a lefty? That'd be really tough to do. So kick's kind of off the limit here. Or could I slice the ball in the box down the middle? I'm going to go with slice. I think I can consistently slice the ball down the middle and that's my goal. And my goal for this round uh, is I'm going to, since it's the first round and then after the first round, I'd like you to do three rounds of this and then you can go to another target. But I'm going to do three rounds of ten. Now I'm not going to do them all on video but that's kind of like what I would do for a practice. And so the first round I'll say, you know what, for the first round I at least got to make six. And then if I make six, then I'll try to try make seven. Then I make seven, I'll try and make eight for the third round. So let's see if I can make six out of ten in the box. If I miss, I'll kind of talk you through and, and also coach you myself through and see what's going wrong if I miss a serve. You should know right away if you miss a serve what's going wrong so you can start to get in the zone. So I'm going into my ritual. I'm looking at the target. I got to make it in this area. Didn't like that toss. Didn't like that toss, so here we go. And that's just long, so I'm 0 for 1. So we're going to go again, and I got to snap sooner. The, the, the actual aim was good, but I missed that target. That's right on the line. So now we're one for two. We go into that ritual again. I'm going to try and repeat that feeling because I like the way that felt. Okay, I'm one for three. And again, I'm snapping late. So not liking that, one for three. So I got to get my snap down. That's what's not happening right now. I noticed even in warm up today I was hitting a lot long. So got to snap sooner. <laughs> there we go. Best serve of the day, two for four. Three for five. Here we go. So trying to keep that rhythm, going into the ritual, looking at the target. That's three for six. So right now we're 50 percent. But if I make three more, I get my six out of ten. So I'm not going to panic. Bad toss. There we go. Good serve right there. Four for seven. There we go. Five for eight. Six for nine. And 
finish with my best serve, seven for 10. So that's a, that's a really great mental exercise because it puts pressure on you. You can see I started out kind of weak, but then the more serves I hit, the more focus I got. I got hot at the end, was able to finish seven for 10. I think at one point we were, I don't know, one for three or something like that. So anyway, go out and practice that perfect serve practice. And if you really want to get your serve to the next level, if you want to three X your serve power, your serve results, I've got a great free train series for you. If you're still watching this video, most likely you really want to get your serve to that next level. And so watch this preview. It's really, really awesome. And sign up because it's one of the best courses I've made. It helps you build the perfect unbreakable kinetic chain. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching sign off. Here's your preview. Sign up if you want more power on your serve. Hey everybody, it's Pete and Matt from hey. Crunch Time Coaching. And we are here with your three-part series on our 3X power training system where we're on a mission to replace your power leaks with power sources.